share my experiences of 60 years of a charitable voluntary institution in an environment like India. I have been with the institution from the time it started in 1954 to date. And uh, it is 60, we are doing the 60th year right now. And I just like to share some of our experiences of a voluntary institution and how we can, today's vision is tomorrow's reality, is what was the topic given. And at the institute, we have always said that today's vision, uh, today's research is going to be tomorrow's treatment. Now, how do we do that? Is it possible? How is it achieved? It can be, I think, to me, it can be one of the greatest motives in life. But it needs motivation, dedication, and commitment. What do I mean by motivation and dedication? The next one. It is a motivation, is a willingness to do whatever you undertake to do to the best of your ability and a passion to work. And this passion must be contagious. You must be work so the passion is so great that everybody who works with you also starts liking it and start becoming a part of the work. Now, what is dedication and commitment? It is a will to reach a goal, a need to be, not to be distorted by obstacles and a confidence that you can achieve. This is something that we, I mean, generally in India lack. I think this is very, very important. And I thought some of the inspiring say sayings also we should try to keep reading so that we are inspired by those and continue to work. Now the next one. Now let us see who is a, what makes an achiever. The makes an achiever. person who is an achiever is a trendsetter. Those with deep sense of purpose and commitment, the will to achieve and not to be disturbed by circumstances because obstacles come in the way. Confidence and courage and not to give up the goal till it is reached. This is what is said both by Vivekananda and in Rig Veda. Awake, arise and stop not till the goal is reached. That must be the motive with which one starts any work. This is to achiever Dr. Muthalakshmi Reddy. She was a legend unto herself. The first woman medical graduate in India. The first woman legislator in the world. And her contribution for upliftment of women was something phenomenal. I think Dr. Reddy as a legislator said, laws and legislations are there only to sanction action and do not constitute action in themselves. This was in 1930. So you know the confidence with which she was talking. It is for women to energize these laws in paper into accomplishments on the ground. I think we today talk of empowerment, women's empowerment. I think yet we know in what stage the women's empowerment is, apart from institutions like this. So she had started this way back in 19. 27. Now, just one more achiever, I thought, share my thoughts. The Lima Glovi, I think she was 39 years. She was a Nobel laureate, I think, 2012. She was a Nobel laureate. I was inspired by what she had said. She said, don't wait for Gandhi. Don't wait for a king. Don't wait for Mandela. You are your own Gandhi. You are your own king. I think the lesson that many of us have to learn is have confidence in yourself and there is nothing that one cannot achieve. If you have a will to do it, there is always a way. Now, I like to say a little more about Dr. Muthalakshmi Reddy because she herself, she is the founder of the Away Home, home for orphan children, parentless children and destitute women. It was started way back in 1930, and the founder of the Cancer Institute in 1954. That was a, almost the first cancer center in South India, and the second in whole, the whole of the country. So she had to go through, I mean, why this name is mentioned is the amount of obstacles 
that one has to face to get this done in a country. I mean, so it is important that we know about people who have been inspired to do this and how they have faced the problem of the obstacles. <clears throat> now, she herself hailed from a handicapped, very socially handicapped environment in an era where girls were born only to be married. She lived with challenges since birth in 1886 and she had to struggle against an environment not just unfavorable but hostile. No girl had been admitted to the Maharaja's college. In the Kote, there was a crescendo of protest from the Hindu orthodoxy. This is she was this, this was in our British rule. We were not independent at the time. And no girl had gone to school. And when she wanted to go to school, there's a hell of a cry. She could not go. But she insisted that she was going to do it. And I, this is in the 1800s. Now, fortunately, I think luck would have it or God willed it that way. The Maharaja of Pudukota, his wife was an Australian lady. And she made an application that she wants to attend school. And the, she said, why not? And that is the way she went to school. Now, the other important, very uh, unique, interesting thing that you may like to know about, in the school when she went, she had to set, sit separately. There was a screen. She had to sit behind the screen. And she can only see the teacher. And all the boys were outside. I mean, this is the way that she was treated. When the class was over, she had to go away out. And then only the boys can go. Otherwise, they said, everybody will get, I mean, they were, I do not know what they were afraid of, but then this was the way it was done. And yet, she became the first medical graduate in the whole country. She, and then she became the first woman legislator in the whole world. Now, Dr. Reddy was a witness to the agony and pain for terminal cancer. Her sister died of a cancer in 1923, when we were under British rule, there were no facilities for treatment of cancer at the time. And all that she could do was to give her morphine all the time. And the girl dying, the girl was 23 when she died. And <clears throat> that was a dream born at the time. She had made up her mind that we should do something for cancer. Of course, she could not do because... I mean, we were under British rule and there was no support. And during the period of her training, she had an she had opportunity to go to London and saw in the Royal Master Hospital people with cancer of the rectum, the similar one that her sister had, go, off, go, go away having been treated and cured. So again, the dream was, came again and said she has to do something. And this dream, the Cancer Institute at Chennai, is the consummation of the dream born in 1923 at the bedside of her sister dying and in the Royal Master Hospital when she saw cured patients. Now, it was not an easy task. The obstacles that she had to face when she wanted to set the hospital, she had to wait for independence. She could do nothing much till we got independence. And when we did get the independence and when she <coughs> begged her, there is a total public apathy. The Honorable Minister for Health said, why a cancer hospital? People only die of cancer. And that was the, that was the uh, background, that was the public information, awareness. Not that it has changed much now, even today. People still believe cancer is incurable, but people don't know. This awareness has to improve. But anyway, at that time, it was so bad the government would not do anything to help her. And she had not very little money, so she had to go for land. She had a lot of obstacles, and ultimately some land was given. Of course, we are situated in that land, which was given to us by the government at that point of time in 1952. <coughs> the consummation of the dream is the Cancer Institute that you see here. That was where how we started in Sevagra type of huts. And... Uh, we had to put all the patients in hearts only. And this is what we are today. Over a period of 60 years, we have, been over, we have been able to grow by the grace of God. But essentially, 
a commitment and motivation and an ethos of service. We are now a comprehensive cancer center consisting of a hospital of 450 beds, a research division. The research division now is designated a department of excellence by the Department of Science and Technology. We have a college of oncologic sciences and a division of preventive oncology. I think that is what we are over 60 years and every much of this has been possible with a lot of obstacles but commitment and <coughs> dedication to what we want to do for the underprivileged. In the early years, we were only two honorary medical officers, two auxiliary nurses, one technician and 12 beds. I think I had the privilege of being one of the medical officers at the time. In the early years, the state government, this is done entirely on voluntary basis. There was no governmental support. Dr. Muthalakshmi Reddy formed the, the Cancer Relief Fund from the Women's Indian Association and collected just one lakh of rupees. All that we had at the time was one lakh when we started and the first block of buildings. And the government, when we went to government for any asking for any support, the state government was apathetic. The DMS, <coughs> the, the Director of Medical Education, declared the Cancer Institute as an uneconomic unit. They were not bothered about cancer, advised us to close the shop. That is what the language used by them. And we were asked to justify when we applied for books for library. We said, justify the need for a library. You can understand the environment in which one had to struggle. Now, we have a lot of, as voluntary institutions, we have to face the government, we have to say, face the profession, the corporates and the public, and their attitudes are far from satisfactory. There are few random thoughts, because there is a general desire, apart from talking about the institute, I thought to a group of young aspiring students, I must say a few words that I feel is necessary in general. Now, there is a general desire to change. Everybody wants a change. When you ask them, what is the change you want, they do not know. There is an unexplained, inexplicable dissatisfaction. There is an inexplicable dissatisfaction because we feel we are not up to mark. We do not want to be categorized as a, still a developing country. How do we change? Now, there is no answer. Change can come only if we are going to change. Now, the, if you pause and ponder, look at our daily routine life and examine our daily practices and values in schools, colleges and workplace. Discipline, punctuality, cleanliness, behavioral pattern, courteous behavior, helping others, joy of sharing, joy of gifting, respect for each other, and many more. Is it a routine thing in life? I think it hardly exists, and that is the reason why we are still looking for a change. Now, our Prime Minister Modi said, clean India. Clean India cannot come unless there is a total participation. It must be a mass movement. It must be a part of life must be a lifestyle. Can we change it? We can change it only after what we have heard today, education. Education in the proper sense so that people understand. And disposal of sanitary waste, people don't know. We still have open uh, sanitation. So these are all major things that one has to think of. And these are all things that the young people have to think and come out to see that we are going to be a change. We'll have to make any project as a mass movement if you want to be successful and it has to go through the country. Otherwise, it will be only in groups like the BIT or some other institutions. All other, I mean, the rest of India will not change. I think we look forward to all of you to see that something is done to create a better India. Thank you for the opportunity.